Peace and blessings. This is Nubia I, the raw food goddess, the womb priestess, and the holistic practitioner. And today I wanted to talk to you all about food again because it's important. It's so very important. And I really wanted to relate food to mental illnesses because I feel like that is something that is also plaguing our communities, our communities at large, our society in general. And it's something particularly I find in the African American culture or people of color culture that we don't really talk about still. We don't treat it almost as a sensitive and delicate issue that it is. I do not believe that you are predisposed to mental illness or that you are some genetically something went wrong and it triggers something. And don't get me wrong, I don't think that that is not absolutely true, that there are not situations and cases like that where something, maybe when you were, when you were being in your mother's womb or some other thing that happened and you didn't get enough nutrients or whatever, that you could have this thing called mental illness. But I even think that can be healed and cured. I really think like the diagnosis of the bipolar or even sometimes schizophrenia or things like that, I think it has a lot to do with the foods that we eat. I am really on the foods today because last night um, a friend of mine was having a celebration uh, just um, at that we had it at this uh, vegan and raw food restaurant and they ordered some uh, organic red pesticide free no preservative free wine which is still alcohol though but it's quality you know and I had a glass and a half and my head is like so groggy and I got a little headache and you know just really feeling drained and tired and and I realized that when we're in this kind of state, or even a worse state, imagine if you had a bunch of, you know, steak dinner and mashed potatoes and macaroni and cheese and all these foods and very little vegetables, how we feel. A lot of times we think it does affect our mental state. It does affect the way we think. It is linked. If you are eating foods, and this is a great I mean, in my case, it was a raw vegan and it was, you know, good, good food. But if you are eating things that are sugar, let me just name them. If you're eating stuff that has a lot of sugar, you're drinking lots of sodas, you're eating very little vegetables, you're uh, eating foods that are pesticide or chemically filled, or if you're doing that or you're eating too much or eating too late at night, that is going to affect your mental state. And everybody that's listening to this, we know it. We know it. It's different things. We know when we're hungry, we can't think well. Like, I can't even focus. I'm too hungry. You know, we've said that. So food, we know that food plays a part. We know that if we eat too much now, we want to go to sleep and we can't do as much. Can you imagine that if you were diagnosed with a particular disorder and you change your diet? What the food does and these chemicals, those basically is, is wrecking, wrecking havoc inside your body. It's causing chaos. Because the body is recognizing, is wanting to recognize food and then use food for fuel. But if you're sending all these other things, can you imagine how much the body is working basically in disharmony? Which of course would create more disharmony in your mental state. It really does matter. People say, oh well, you know, people are so focused on the food, but if you don't know who you are and what... You can't even get to who you are you can't, because you're not who you are. Who you are in your natural state is nothing. It will look nothing like who you are today, who you are right now. We know we have a headache. We're more irritable. So if foods are causing headaches, then maybe we want to stop eating those at least kinds of foods, right? We know when we're tired, we're irritable as well. So if certain foods are, are our organs are you being so overused that we're becoming so tired, that's affecting our mental state. So just think about years and years and years of this way of being, of thinking, of eating, how much it could affect our mental state. If you are suffering from bipolar or schizophrenia or any other dis mental disorder, try this. Try to, not even try, do this. Start adding salads to your life, an organic salad. Start adding green smoothies to your life. And be careful of the things that you consume, the things that you put into your body. Be cautious. 
Get out in nature more. Walk more. Write more. But we have to pay attention to what we put inside our bodies. It really does matter. I know. <laughs> My head is hurting. It's groggy. I'm tired. I really did this video because I always want to come to you with as much transparency and honesty as I can about my own self. The raw food journey, the raw food lifestyle is superior to me. But vegan foods, well cooked, lightly cooked, quickly cooked, uh, good energy when cooking your vegan foods is good as well for many people. For me, my spirit keeps saying you've evolved, you've elevated, you can't go back, so just keep going further. But for many people, it may be just that they get to vegan foods and meaning no meat, no dairy, and really organic, and that would be great. You would add probably 20 years, if not more, to your life. But you would clear up that mental clutter, that mental chatter. I notice I'm, I watch people a lot, and I look at their their what when they're going through stuff, and what, what what that reflects, what that starts to look like, what it appears to be like when you're going through something. Notice the things that you do. Notice the clothes that you pick out when you're not in a good mental state, when you're not eating well. Notice the conversations. Notice the words that you speak. They may be more vulgar, more harsh, more. Uh, there is something, you know, somebody asked me to do a video on, and I'm going to do it. This is going to be a video with a lot of different subjects and topics, but they all relate. A video on how can I hold my tongue. Some people, are they flash all the time. They have loose lips, and they say the wrong things, and at the wrong time. It has a lot to do with the diet. A lot of people that do a lot of pastries and sugar and that those those flours and, and dairy, but particularly pastries, I'm finding, has a tendency to have those loose lips, to say very harsh things to people or just that them, their mouth get them in trouble. So they're not choosing their words correctly because sometimes the brain is on sugar and it's just going so fast and you see how kids go. I mean, you're not connected to your body. Your body has taken off and it is affecting the way that you feel and you think. So check out your diet. If you're finding that you're growing tired, I'm so tired of my hair, I don't know what to do, I'm going to do this and then I'll do that and then I'll take it off and I'll put a wig on it because I'm... It's a, it's a relax and go into yourself and just say what's really going on with me because I, I'm perfect as far as as perfect as I can be at this point in my life. So check your diet if you're angry, if you're confused, if you are living in clutter and chaos, check out what you're eating because we know when we eat quick, you know when you have a busy day and you get something on the run and you get this food that you know is kind of like a fast food, even though maybe from a cook restaurant but it's still a fast food, and you know that that affects how you feel. You know that when you miss your green smoothie or you didn't drink your lemon water or you didn't, you know like, oh, I'm a little bit off today, you know. But you also know when you do have those things, you'll be like, wow, I'm really on today. I'm really on today. We have to. So how do you curb your appetite so that you can curb those negative words or thoughts or reactions? You monitor the foods that you eat. I mean monitor. I mean check it out. You go in your refrigerator and you start going through the shelves and pull out jars and say, and look at the ingredients. Sugar, high fructose, corn syrup, maybe not. Maybe not. And, and, and start taking away those things out of your life. Go into your cabinets and open it up. I mean, a lot of white flour and, and, and sugar and salt and no it affects you you want to be a sacred woman you want all your words to dis disperse sacred medicine then you have to treat your body as that there is no separation I don't care what anyone says there is not so you have to be careful of what you take in when I eat wrong when I drink the wrong things at the wrong time I, it affects the conversations that I have with my man, it affects the conversations that I have with my daughter, and I find myself having to apologize. But when I get a lot of rest and I eat right, and rest has a lot to do with it as well. 
It's so important that we take good care of ourselves so that we can think right, so that we can feel right, so that we can gain the prosperity that we say. Abundance is not just money. It's good health and good relationships. It matters. I know because I got a headache <laughs> and my head is groggy. It matters. And I come to you and I, try, I want to be as transparent as I possibly can because I know that I'm real. I'm a real human being with flesh and blood. And so I'm not some, you know, sitting on a cloud dispersing information. Although at times when I do my raw foods and I get a lot of rest and I get up every morning, I've gotten up for 71 days straight today. People ask me, what do you do? From I wake up at 4 in the morning. When that clock goes off, I get up and do womb yoga. If you have the book uh, called Sacred Woman, she has illustrations of 25 yoga asanas, asanas or postures. And they're all dealing with the womb. So I do this yoga. It's intense. So I'm doing, I'm doing push-ups and sit-ups and, 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 and just, oh gosh, and it's an hour. And then after that, I go to my altar and I say my prayers and I ask my guardians and my spirit guides to be with me today. And there's different gateways that I go in. Right now I'm dealing with sacred food. That's why I'm talking to you. So I'm dealing with the green of the earth. I'm dealing with nature. I'm dealing with nature as a healing form for my mental state, for my physical state, and for my spiritual state. And then I go in the bathtub for one hour, and I'm doing breaths of fire. Check out my video. I have a video on breaths of fire. I'm doing chakra balancing and meditation. Check that out. I also have a video on that as well. But I'm, I'm visualizing. I'm meditating. I'm listening. I'm asking, what do I need to do? Look, it doesn't really, whatever you did that day, and to, let's say today you woke up and it just didn't go right, and you didn't eat the right foods that day, and you fell, and you had fried foods, and you said some harsh things to people, forgive yourself. And going, getting up the next day and doing that yoga, it released all of yesterday, and doing those salt baths, it released all of anything that happened yesterday, and every day I'm born anew. Every day I'm born anew. And that's what I want for you, to be born anew. It matters what you eat. Don't let anybody tell you that it does not matter. But it's a combination. It's also getting out in that sun. And I know, oh, a lot of y'all, you're afraid of the sun. You're slapping on that sunscreen. And when I tell you that, it's not necessary. Look, you, it's, it's, this is my opinion. So... I'm not a doctor. Somebody asked me, well, if the doctor says that when you get a suntan, it means that you got a sunburn. I, see, I disagree with that. I don't understand if the sun is so harmful for us, how come there's a bunch of people living on the equator that do not have skin cancer and they do not use sunscreen? Look. The foods that you eat are sun-fired foods. The foods get this color, the chlorophyll, from the sun. The sun is powerful. If it can give fruits and vegetables its, its energy, its vitamins and minerals, and help you to feel better, then why would it be harmful to you? You have to learn to, we have to have a better relationship with nature. We're so afraid of ourselves. We're so afraid of something that the doctor did not tell us. The doctor says, look at your doctor. Is she or he healthy? How long are they living? What is their mental state? There's a, there's a, that's, that's a knowledge, and it's a knowledge to be respected, but it's a limited knowledge. You have to be experimental. You have to experiment yourself. Why are we putting something that is obviously has chemicals and then look at the sunscreen, and then we're baking those chemicals into our skin with the sun? So if the sun is, so, oh, because it's protecting us from, do you really believe that? And I'm not saying don't to, to run out and just don't do sunscreen. And, you know, you do have to go with your own intuition. So once it's a sound, I'm just going to go with my own intuition. You do. But if the, if, why don't we believe that everything that we need to be protected from is already provided for us by nature? Why don't we believe that? Why don't we believe? We know that shea butter has SP15. People go, well, I need more than SPF15, Nubia. Really? Who told you that? 
I know the articles. The stuff. I, I know. I don't see. I don't go to the doctor. I don't. I don't go to the doctor because I don't get sick that well way. And if I did, I'm gonna take care of it myself because I know that I can. Thank goodness. And I, I just have a healthy fear of doctors. You know, as Karen Calabrese, the great royal foodist in Chicago, always says, I have a healthy fear of doctors. I don't do it. But I, I want to go back to that. What makes you think that? The, the sun's going to hurt you more than the sunscreen. I mean, you know, we're afraid to sit in the sun, but we're not afraid to eat from McDonald's. You know, we're afraid to sit in the sun, but we're not afraid to bring people that we hardly know into our wombs. People that just got out of prison that we don't really know. No offense to anybody that just got out. I know there's good people coming out all the time, but I know that there's some people that's not good for you. But we'll, we'll let them enter our womb, but we won't put sunscreen on our skin. I mean, but we won't allow ourselves to have the sun without sunscreen. But what I'm telling you is that the shea butter already has the sunscreen in it. The shea butter comes from Africa. There's parts of Africa that have the darkest people in the world. Why do they not have skin cancer? Somebody tell me. They're always in the sun. It's the foods that you eat. A lot of people say, well, when I sit in the sun, I burn. And let me say something about that. And I, I know this, I've studied this, and i read this part. A lot of times, the foods that we eat are really causing the sunburn, not the sun itself. It's that we're not eating enough foods with different vitamins and minerals that we need to protect ourselves from anything, from free radicals, from cancer cells. We're, not, we're eating foods that actually bring on these cancers, that bring on these diseases. So when you start eating more chlorophyll-rich foods and green foods, your body will be able to take the sun a lot more and your skin will be, everything's affected by what you put in your body. So remember that. Start eating more green foods, organic foods, whole foods. Start eating more foods that actually provide you with all the things that, if you will, combat any negativity that may be outside of you. The sun is not just to... Uh, to, to make you darker too. I mean the sun is providing you, it's great for your mental health. I can't tell you technically everything that it's doing because the only thing to tell you is that I do it and when I'm feeling down I sit in the sun I feel better. It's pulling out toxins that helps my, my skin to glow and, to, and me to grow. This is nature. Why are we afraid? Maybe we should be we have to let go. We have to let go of all the things. If you know that you're suffering from mental illness and you're on a bunch of drugs and you still don't feel better, or well, what is better? Because I don't want to feel better than worse. I want to feel great. If you know that you're, not, you're feeling depressed and you don't know what to do with it, try sitting in the sun. You may be surprised. Another thing, too, I want to talk about the body is we don't take enough air baths. That we are really were made to allow our bodies to have air dance around our bodies. And let me tell you what an air bath is. An air bath is after you shower or take a bath, usually you towel yourself dry, right? And then you immediately maybe put your lotion on, your shea butter, and then you put your clothes on. When does your body ever get oxygen? We could eliminate so many diseases, skin diseases particularly, but many others, if we were to get more oxygen to our body. So I suggest, I make a suggestion, please, that you don't put your clothes on so quickly. And if you are allowed to in your own home, be naked for a while. Let the air, open the windows, but close the curtains. You know, I mean, open the windows as far as getting the air. You can close your curtains or your shades or your blinds and you allow that ear to dance around your body and to heal your body. It's essential. They're called air baths. I do it often. I, yes. <laughs> I walk around naked as much as I possibly can in my own home in the privacy of my own space. It's important. Things they don't tell you. Your doctor does not tell you this. Your doctor may not know. So you have to really start looking at everything from mental to physical to spiritual. That's holistic. That's what holistic means. That is no one cause for anything. That everything is interconnected and that everything can heal me or any, everything can hurt me. What do I want? And that one thing affects the other. So 
Um, okay, and anyway, also I wanted to talk about these earrings. People have been asking me about these earrings. It's a sister, a Facebook friend of mine. Her name is Indigo. It's a longer name. I'm going to put her link in the description box, but let me show you. They are Africa. And they have this little symbol here, like the sun, which I absolutely love. And the other side is plain. And then this is the uh, Aset, the wings of Aset, a comedic goddess mother. And you can see this side. And I just absolutely love these earrings. And so I wanted to big her up. She sent them to me, and I'm so I'm so thankful to her. I'm thankful to K Unity as well for all the other beautiful earrings. I tell you, if you think that you that something that you have that you think that I might like, because you kind of know me, maybe you should feel free to send them to me. Um, you know, I'm a natural vegan sister, so. Do what you can, and uh, that's from anything from beautiful artistic clothing to jewelry to, I would say hair accessories, but I don't really have that much right now, and I am enjoying my hair, enjoying my, my cut immensely, so I'm very happy with that. Anyway, just very tired, need some rest, overdid it last night, um, hope this is not too, you know, erratic, this video, hope it's as clear as I can possibly be right now because my head is not that clear but I'm giving thanks I'm alive and I can do it again today a lot better this is Nubia I the raw food goddess the womb priestess of the holistic practitioner and I'm sending you love peace